Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear viewers, welcome back. Before the break, we were talking about the need for us to study the biographies of our pious scholars from the past and the lessons and the morals that we could learn from their stories. We also mentioned the reason why we have to study their biographies. And I was basically answering a question that might, might come into our mind that why, what, you know, why, what would exactly these scholars have contributed and were there any needs for their contribution because the religion is completed. I have already have answered this one. You see, one thing that we have to understand is that Islam is not a religion like an ancient building. You know, people visit the ancient building, they look at, they study the bricks, they look at the format of the building, they look at the construction, and then they say, you know what, this is a good building, but it should be going to the museum now, because this building now uh, has come to an end by the passing of the time. That is not Islam. No. Islam is a religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created to remain forever. It is a religion for everyone in every zone, every time space, every area that is living, for every cities, for every, you know, for whether you're in 2016 or 2030 or 2050 or whenever Allah decides the, the world to come to an end. It's forever. Because it's not, Islam is not a religion, Islam is not a religion based on people's thinking and ideology. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's from the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa also spoke whatever Allah azza wa has confirmed and affirmed. For example, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the Quran says, وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he does not speak from his own desire. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ It is a revelation that is revealed to him. Okay, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa needs to explain it is a revelation as well. Okay, if the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa were to make a mistake, and the Prophet ﷺ didn't make mistakes. But there are a few ishtihadi mistakes that the Prophet of Allah did make ﷺ, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrected him. Okay, from this we can understand the Prophet, Prophets are ma'sumun. They are infallible. They don't make these kind of errors. So, but the Imams that we're going to mention, they could make mistakes. And that is why Allah Azza will continue to create scholars that they will look at uh, the works of the scholars where they have made mistakes. They will tell us that this is maybe because they have reasons logical reasons. You cannot find a scholar that he has rejected an authentic hadith deliberately without any uh, logical explanation. These kind of scholars you would not find. If you do find these kind of scholars, then you will notice that they are rejected. Alhamdulillah, the scholars that we're going to talk about, as I said to you, the four Imams, they are the scholars that unanimously, you could say, agreed by the Ummah. They have some criticisms as well. We will talk about that, inshallah, once we discuss their biographies. Moving on to the second point that I would like to make, which I have already indicated in the previous, uh, before the break, that is uh, why Allah Azza wa Jal, the scholars that we have mentioned, are they, are, do, we, do we find them just by coincidence? You know, that is, no, that is not true. They, they are decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, these scholars, Allah azza wa has created them. In a poet, he says, Allah has created some people for knowledge, some people for the battlefields, some people for, or you call it, to be knights, and some people for, uh, for scholars and writers, and some people Allah created for food and drink. In other words, the poet is saying, some people, in, in our modern translation, will say, I, I say to my students, some people are for knowledge Allah created, and some people just to consume chicken and chips. The scholars that we are talking about, they were brilliant scholars, they were thinkers. Allah has created them, you know, they've understood the Quran and Sunnah the way it should be understood. And that, alhamdulillah, that is the reason why today we are talking about them. Imam Sufyan al-Thawri says something very beautiful. He says, عِنْدَ ذِكْرِ الصَّالِحِينَ تَنْزِلُ الرَّحْمَةِ at the mentioning of the righteous people, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend. These are the, uh, these were the, uh, the people, the scholars that we are talking about, they were very pious. And inshallah ta'ala talking about them in our, our, our coming uh, programs, talking about them and thinking about them and, and discussing their contribution, inshallah ta'ala the rahmah, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will descend. And this is why you know, many books have been written about their biographies. You'll find so many scholars. What's really interesting is this, that a Shafi'i scholar, he has written a biography of, a, of Imam Abu Hanifa. And a, Rikale, a Maliki scholar, for example, has written the biography of Imam Ahmad. Ibn Hanbal, because they are from different schools of thoughts, but that doesn't mean that they criticize any of the scholars. This is a very important point as well. 
Just because we follow uh, the opinion of Imam Ahmad does not mean that we uh, are going to disregard the views of Imam Malik. And just because I follow the views of Imam Abu Hanifa does not mean that I will disregard the views of Imam Shafi'i and other scholars as well. No. You know, all the scholars, beautifully explained by another poet, he says that when you study the views of the scholars, you'll find different, different words coming from different scholars. Okay? He will say this is correct, he will say that I prefer something else, etc. So they said that how come they differ? So one of a, a poet has explained this very beautifully. He says very nicely that Ibaratuna Shatta Wal Maksidu Wahidu wa kullun ila al jamali yushiru. He said our phrases are different. Our words are different. Yeah? The phrases and the words that we choose they might be different, but our purpose is one. That is to, you know, to revive the deen of Allah Azza wa All of us, we are trying to understand the book of Allah. All of us, we are trying to come to the correct understanding of the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The purpose is one. And every four of imams, mashallah ta'ala, in the different interpretation are indicating towards that beauty. The beauty of religion. Our religion accepts difference of opinions. Our religion accepts okay, people to understand uh, something different. It's not a problem because the Quran and Sunnah is calling us to ruminate, to contemplate, to concentrate, to think. That is not a problem. Okay? The problem is when we start to uh, completely uh, tahqir. You know, when we belittle others, when we start calling names and when we start saying that you're wrong, I'm right, I'm good, you're bad, I'm perfect, you know, I'm big, you're, you know, and I'm small and there's nothing you could do about it, okay, a little quote from Matilda. That is not we, our attitude. Our attitude is that, alhamdulillah, everyone has contributed. Every of the scholars were known for their piety. And you know, inshallah, you will notice when I will talk about the scholars later on, you will notice something that they were known for piety. You know, they were known for the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were known that, uh, for, for many other beautiful uh, attributes that you could find in the lives of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Finally, when you, when you notice that whenever falsehood came, okay, then truth came in the name of the scholars I've mentioned. For example, you know, at the time of Imam Ahmad, falsehood came with the name of, with, with, with an issue, you know, falsehood came with a topic called Khalq al-Quran, that the Quran is a created speech. Okay, and because what happened at the time of Imam Ahmad, people went into philosophy, they studied all these philosophical arguments, and Imam Ahmad bin Hamad rahimahullah ta'ala, he stood against them. Okay, and despite the fact he didn't study philosophy, Imam Ahmad, but he was such a strong person. As I said to Allah, chosen him. Okay, he tackled all the philosophers. He made them. He silenced them all. He was beaten up, and we'll talk about that inshallah when we talk about his biography. But Imam Ahmad, Ibn Hamad, rahimahullah ta'ala, he became victorious. How? Because today no one even knows the founding father or the founding person of Khalq, Fitna of Khalq al Quran. No one knows. All their names are mentioned in the books of history. But Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah ta'ala. Everyone knows him. How many people talk about Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal? Similarly, at the time of Imam Abu Hanifa, so many fitna came. Fitna of Qadariya, the fitna of Jabariya, the fitna of I'tizal, the fitna of Khawarij was continuing as well. And many other fitna took place at the time of Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala. But Imam Abu Hanifa, he stood against them. And he basically, you know, he made fiqh. Okay, he developed fiqh. Okay, now... And the jurisprudence. Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, he became victorious. How did he become victorious? One of the reasons as I said to you that many of us don't even know about Jahmiya, about Irja, about you know the founding person of Irja or, or, Jah, or Jahmiya or Qadariya and many other groups as well. But everyone remembers Abu Hanifa's name. This is the beauty of truthfulness. That whenever falsehood came to destroy truthfulness, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the truthful, uh, truthfulness to be victorious. قُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوقًا Allah Azza wa we ask him to give us the tawfiq, inshaAllah ta'ala, to remain steadfast in his deen. In our coming episodes, inshaAllah ta'ala, in our coming programs, we were talking about the lives and contribution of the scholars so that we could learn from their uh, less, we could learn lessons from them, inshallah, so that we could learn ethics and morals from them. Inshallah, ta'ala, I hope that you will remain with us. You will be watching the program with enthusiasm and passion so that, inshallah, uh, we will become successful and we could learn many things, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan and I will see you in the coming program. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.